I have a picture up on my IG from the longest yard, not the one with Adam Sandler, which was good, but the real longest yard with Burt Reynolds and Joe Cap. Now, Joe Cap was a guy who just passed away today at 85. He was suffering from dementia. He led the Vikings Super Bowl IV, where they were big favorites against the Chiefs and ended up losing 23-7. He played eight seasons in the Canadian Football League, was remembered for his toughness playing through injury after injury. He spent, as an eight-season CFL, making the NFL with the 67 Vikings, took them to the Super Bowl IV in 1970, died, I'm sorry, Monday, San Jose. He was, son said he was in an assisted living facility with complications of dementia. He gained reputation for resilience in the face of injury. He said, I played with cracked ribs and a punctured lung and a torn knee and separated shoulder and a half dozen other injuries. I've been called one half of a collision looking for another. He wants to be running out of bounds to avoid a little physical contact with a linebacker. He said, maybe this goes back to my Chicano childhood and machismo. Machismo means manliness, a willingness to act like a man. And if a kid didn't have machismo in the polyglot neighborhoods of the San Fernando and Salinas Valleys in California, where I grew up, he had it tough. He was partly of Mexican descent, was labeled the toughest Chicano by Sport Illustrated on the July 1970 cover. They saw him as a successor to Fran Tarkenton, who'd been traded to the Giants. He tied a single-game NFL record held by several quarterbacks when he threw seven touchdown passes against the defending league champions, the Colts, in September 1969. He threw 19 touchdowns that season, leading the Vikings to the Super Bowl against the Chiefs, that, uh, which was the AFC champ, which was its last season before it merged with the NFL. You know, they had the Purple People Eaters, they had Carl Eller, they had Jim Marshall at the ends, Alan Page and Gary Larson at the tackles. And they ended up losing 23-7. He, inj- he incurred a badly injured shoulder when he was hit on a bootleg play. He pl- stayed in, completed 16 passes for a buck 83, two interceptions. He said the Kansas City defense looked like a redwood forest. <laughs> Big guys. He joined Boston later, Patriots in 70. They went 2-12, and 12, then drafted Jim Plunkett of Stanford, the Heisman Trophy winner, who ended up not doing well and then going to the Raiders and winning two Super Bowls there. He had a contract dispute, refused to sign a standard player's contract for the 71 season, quit the team in July, filed an antitrust suit against the NFL. Jerry declined to award him damages, but the case represented an early challenge in the player's ultimately successful struggle to win free agency rights. So he, right, so he started something there, there, you know? I mean, he started something. And he was born March 19, 1930 in Santa Fe, oldest of five children. His mother was of Mexican heritage. His dad was of German descent. Moved to California when he was young. He played football and basketball in high school. Got an athletic scholarship to Cal Berkeley. Led the Bears to the Pacific Coast Conference football championship before they became the Pac-12 in 58 and a berth in the Rose Bowl game and lost to Iowa. He also played basketball at Cal. They won a pair of Pacific Coast championships, 6-2-205. He set a career rushing record for Cal quarterbacks, running for 931 yards in three seasons. But the Golden Bears employed a split T formation favoring a quarterback option running plays over the passing game. So because of that, he wasn't selected in the 59 draft until the Redskins, now called the Commanders, chose him in the 18th round. They used to have very, they had, they had, the drafts back then went on forever. They never contacted him, went to CFL, spent a year and a half with the Stampeders of Calgary. Then was traded to the British, British Columbia Lions after un, undergoing knee surgery. He led them to the 63 Grey Cup game for the CFL championship, a loss to the Hamilton Tiger Cats, but they defeated Hamilton 34-24 for the 64 Grey Cup. Two-time CFL All-Star threw for 136 touchdown passes, was inducted into the Canadian Football Hall of Fame in 84, and he was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 2004. Then he turned to acting. He was in Ironside. He was in the longest yard with, with, uh, with, with Burt Reynolds, also semi-tough with Burt Reynolds, was the coach of Cal in 82, a season that fam- famously ended with the play, you know, that lateral by Cal for the winning touchdown against Stanford. He went 20 wins, 34 losses, and a tie in five seasons. He was the British Columbia Lions general manager for most of the 90 season and head coach of the Arena League's Sacramento attack in 1992. He survived by his son, second wife, another son, daughters, brother, his first wife died in 2005. But uh, pro football players aren't easily intimidated, but Cap's intensity made a de- decided impression. This is from Kansas City defensive head Jerry Mays, was quoted in Sport Illustrated, was saying after the Super Bowl win over the Vikings, he said, he's a sorry passer and really not a great quarterback, but he's a great leader. I hated to play against him. You felt his presence no matter where he was, on the sidelines or on the field. 
He'd look at you and challenge you with his eyes. When I think of him, I think of his eyes. So rest in peace. I saw that. I saw the minute I thought of Joe Cap, I thought of the longest yard. I said, I'm posting the picture. It's old school. A lot of people, you know, that's my generation. Longest Yard, one of the greatest movies ever. I'm sorry, a great sports movie. Just a great movie. I love that movie. I love Burt Reynolds. I did. And Joe Cap was a badass. You could just tell you, sorry, passer, but a leader. And you know, I mean, he played football and basketball at Cal. Goes to the CFL, nobody drafts him. Goes to the NFL, leads his team to a Super Bowl. You know what? Think about that. In the last 54 years, no Jet quarterback has led his team to a Super Bowl. Think about that. None. You know, I mean, Jaguars have never been to Super Bowl in their, in their history. Titans have been to one. Oilers and Titans have been to one. I mean, there's not a lot of guys that have even played in the Super Bowl. Dan Marino played in one in his career. Joe Cap, you get your moment. I wanted to start with that. I was really going to start with this SWAT, which was canceled, and I was all pumped. Well, fans complained, and Shamar Moore complained, and they're getting another goddamn season, 13 episodes, to finish it, finish it appropriately, I guess you want to say. I was like, oh, my God, another season of SWAT. Are you fucking kidding me? I thought we were done. We watched, you know what we watched last night? We watched The Equalizer, and I love Queen Latifah. That show is a piece of shit. Piece of shit. Yeah, it's, it's garbage, just like SWAT. I know Michigan likes to unwind, but it is shit TV. And uh, Patrick, thank you so much. Reaching, yeah, I had a great time with you. I'll have you on the show. Everybody, you know, Dom wished him happy birthday yesterday. Told him, I've told a lot of people they want to be on the show. But now this is a good thing. Please subscribe to my YouTube page. You know, I finally switched it over. You know, I didn't put up, none of the videos went up. I get an email. Finally, I was kind of curious what my numbers were in April because I finally put it up on the, you know, I finally got all the, 